Kadash Segino. Welcome. Yeah, what are you doing these days? Oh my gosh, uh, I'm doing, I'm still doing some teaching, mm -hmm. I'm doing some writing, I'm looking at uh, creating a new program, I did last year actually, in communications. Oh, you just set up a new program? I did. Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where are you based? I'm based at uh, Glenman College, mm -hmm. York University, which is the bilingual campus of the university. I mm -hmm. think it's French and English for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and your position there is what? Uh, now I'm a full professor. Um, officially, I just retired, but I'm still teaching and I'm still directing the program. I don't think for a lot of us. What a wonderful so. country. Yeah. <laughs> that is, you can, you can do that. You can do yeah. that. In fact, you don't have to retire. Yeah. In Canada? Mm -hmm. Oh, but mm -hmm. in many other countries you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, we're grateful. We're yeah. really grateful for a lot of things that okay. we can do. Okay. How long have you been there at, at, uh, at Glendale? Does forever count? <laughs> well, I don't know, because I was citing you when I was beginning in, in translation yeah. studies. So, I would you know, say the it's classical been studies that were there at the beginning and on explicitation, on uh, yeah, that's true. things like that's that. Started you know? out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you've been a. You've yeah. seen the, the rise of translation studies, I guess. I have. Yeah. I, have. Uh, I came out of linguistics, and mm -hmm. at that time you either came out of linguistics or you came out of literature. Mm. There was no translation studies. You couldn't get a doctorate in translation studies, except yeah. if you went... Well, if you were a francophone, you could go to Paris, but other than that, you couldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, a personal question. What's your first language? My first language is English. Right, but your name is so French. I know, I married <laughs> like, for it. <laughs> oh, you got the, you I got, got the nationality as a birthday present. The national. So what? Where, where are you from then? Uh -huh. No, no, I'm Canadian, but yeah. I also have French nationality. Oh, you got French nationality. I do. Okay, yeah. and so your your dominant language, I don't know, in a home situation is what? It depends. Now I would say it's English. Okay. There was a time it was French. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're back between. Yeah. But I'm a good example of um, of a good education system. Because? Because I, I chose, because we had to do French at school. Mm. And then I went away and I, I studied in Switzerland and I studied in France, and, and that changed my life. Okay. You came in from linguistics. Um, have you been a translator along the way? A or? tiny little bit. Okay. A tiny little bit, but I did professional writing as mm -hmm. well. As I came along, and I think that fed into okay. to the translation. Okay, let's go back uh, there in your early mid twenties. You were then in linguistics, I would assume, or, or I how, wasn't, how was that? No, what uh, happened was I was in as an undergraduate. I did um, a double major in psychology and in French, and I knew I wanted to go into graduate work, and I couldn't decide which I wanted, so I decided to go study graduate psychology in France. And, mm -hmm. and this is a good reminder to people that there are things that seem logical that actually turn out not to be good ideas at the beginning, but every mistake is a learning experience. But psychology is not a good idea. What, what, no, it's that um, it's very clear to people who work in language long enough that it's not just a question of words and meaning changes, it's the whole conceptual structure behind a discipline um, is different. If you happen yeah. to move to somewhere that they don't have the same methodologies, that um, the entire history, the scientificity of the discipline is different. So we're talking about moving to France or moving to psychology? I was so, doing yeah. psychology in France, yeah. but the psychology they did in France was very different from the psychology they did in yeah. North America. Yeah. And when you look at the history of the discipline, you can understand why. France inherited at the time, I'm not saying it's the same now, but they inherited the philological tradition of the Germans, so the romanticism of it. Mm -hmm. And still the way certain kinds of psychology is written is much, much different from what would be done with the kind of behaviorist model that was then being done in North America. So have you applied that background in your work on translation? Absolutely. For Absolutely. example? Um, I was starting in translation about the time when Peter Newmark was considered the absolute expert. Why? Because he moved things from being linguistically based, in other words, comparative stylistics was the mm -hmm. thing that people did, 
uh, into the, the practical world. In other words, how does translation, how do you actually do it? How does, uh, how is it actually done in the real world? We're talking about the 1980s. Yep, that's right. 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 Yeah. And so my knowing something about what was being done in psychology led me to look at what people were saying, you know, translation is done this way, this is what happens when you do it, and, and I could see that that wasn't possibly true. For mm. example, people used to explain that uh, inside your head you had a lexicon, and if you had two languages, well, then you would have two lexicons, and that just clearly isn't the case, that um, there are relationships between languages where one word might call up another, but in fact, most people are thinking thoughts, which are more on the, they may not be the sentence level, but they're, they're certainly mm. the level of having something you're saying about something. Did we know that before the neuroimaging research? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Okay. There, were, there, were, there was a small group of us who yeah. met together. Barbara Moser Mercer was yeah. one of those people. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how does that then impinge on, on research on translation or research that would be of direct interest to translators? There are two ways that you could use translation in the research, it seems to me, at least two for my own needs. One is translation is a way of looking at how people access and store language in the brain. Mm -hmm. So there's some of the translation research that's being done now which is actually showing that. Whether that would be of interest to translators in terms of how to do things or how to do it better, I don't think so. But intellectually it's very interesting mm -hmm. to understand that. And it can also be interesting to other people. But that's sort of that. bilingualism studies. Exactly. So, yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And the other way I think that translation studies is doing research that has to do with psychology has to do with things of, you know, people are not usually saying um, what they really mean directly. Mm -hmm. And the more you work with language, the more you realize that it's not just a question of conventions about how you're polite in language or not polite. It's a, it's a question of things like power hierarchies. It's a question of whether or not you're allowed to change topics or you have to carry a topic on until there's a there's a hole there that, where you could change it so all of all of those kinds of things have to do with um, how people relate to each other in that psychology mm -hmm. and then language is another layer on top of that like how does that express how does that get expressed for us in language but certainly for other people for example, if you talk about things like audiovisual translation, you have to look at um, do you want less attention paid to whatever someone writes on the bottom um, where they're actually trying to understand what's said, or do you want a relationship between the words at the bottom and whatever's going on at the screen? Right. So that means the way you teach people how to, how to subtitle is going to be different depending on okay. the whole. Good. That's a good example. You just gave a wonderful paper on, on how translation works in banks in Canada, mm -hmm. um, which is really, I mean, that's not psychology, it, it's workplace risk management, as you saw. Uh, have you moved to a different pole there, or, or what happened from your psychological interest in, in, in translation process and decisions to workplace studies? It has to do with how science progresses. Mm. And in fact, I said it you just as you were walking in, you may not have heard your name. It was oh. very funny. <laughs> was it positive or negative? <laughs> it was positive. Oh, okay. It was right. positive. Because what I said, I, and I do believe this, that we've really, in, in process studies, that we've moved from our beginnings where we mm. thought we could take something simple like uh, expert versus non-expert yeah. or novice, and, and that came from psychology. Mm. And so we could take those kinds of experiments and we could replicate them and then we would find out what makes the difference between someone who, who's a good translator and not. And what we discovered was, well, actually some students are better than some so-called professionals. So then we had to look at that variable. And as we moved from variable to variable, it became clear that there's always an exception or there's a pole, if you will, and there's something in between those poles. So what is it you can actually say with any certainty? And I quoted you because you were quoting um, the problems of choosing one variable. You were using network theory in, in mm. one of your papers, you, yeah. I think you remember, that when you choose one variable to do a study on, you are in fact assuming that other factors 
aren't more important yeah. than the variable that you're studying. Yeah. And for me, that's a huge leap in, in science. For me personally, if I don't believe that something has ecological validity, I, 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 can't, I can't write on it. I can't actually come up with a project that I think is worth doing. It has to be true of, of something real. So you gave the example, you went into the banks with a set of questions, mm -hmm. and then you quickly found it was the wrong set of questions. It's not mm -hmm. that it was the wrong set of right. questions, although I, did, I said that that way, yeah, okay. because I did get answers to those questions, yeah. some of which I find very interesting. But they moved on to a variable that was more powerful. What happened was yeah. as I began to ask someone you know, first I would do the relationship thing, like how how many years have you been at the bank, yeah. and you know, have you seen changes? And then I would get into the specifics, and then someone, the first person, who was the senior translator, said to me, "We used to do it this way, but for the last five years, we have not." And I thought this is very interesting. He used to use translog, now we can't. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because at the bank, they use Trados. I would imagine. Trados. So that's what I meant. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. So, so at the bank, what happens is each department is allowed to use the software that every department is allowed to use. Or, if there are departments that need specific software, then it's designed by the bank. It's not commercial. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty obvious, especially when you're using a language like French, where the surface of the language is so important. People care about spelling mistakes so much, and there are very, very good programs for people. Checkers, just like spell mm -hmm. checkers yeah, and yeah. grammar checkers, they're not allowed to have it. Yeah. And they're not allowed to use memory, yeah. memory programs, mm -hmm. because they would yeah. be the only department to use it, and yeah. there could be a virus. But you said even there's no term, uh, common terminology base. There, are, In a couple of the yeah. banks yeah. there yeah. are. The one I went into yeah. originally, the one I did the most research on, yeah. no. Because uh, people would have to, from other departments, would have to have access yeah. to it, or people they brought in on contract would have to have access to it, and they don't want that. That's just the way that bank was set up. There's another bank that outsources all their translations, and they do have the term okay. bank internally. So there are all kinds of organizational issues. Um, and, and although I used banking as an example, the reason I, I chose banking um, is because, and I didn't have a chance to say this, when you look at translation programs, they offer things, well, at least what I've seen, is general translation and then specialized translation. So if you look at something like specialized translation in finance or banking, what do you get? Specialized terminology. And yet, if you look at the real situation, that is not, in fact, what they necessarily need. Okay. And banks have their own systems for yeah. bringing people that specialization. Okay. What struck me is everything we think is an advance, mm -hmm. all the technologies, but also the work process that flows, the, the cooperation, wasn't used in the cases you cited. For what reason? That was the risk management. Risk management, confidentiality, you know, just criteria that are not on our horizon. That's right. Yeah. And and when we think about how we train students, uh, at the beginning we used to train students, they would be hired by translation departments. We used to have a course in managing a translation service. Mm -hmm. How many mm -hmm. years has it been since there have been translation services? I mean, there may exist in government. Well, you said they're coming back because they're of the confidentiality. Back. Yes, They're coming yeah. back, partly because of the confidentiality and partly because of the multiplicity of roles that translators could take on if the managers wanted them to. If you use a program like Trados, then you can have some of the accounting functions done by your, your program, the program mm -hmm. um, that does translation management mm -hmm. is also a, an accounting program. Yes, yes. But if you can't use that, if you can't use that, then you need a, an accounting program because you have to account for um, how how many words does a translator yeah, there, there are plenty of translation management programs. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was a wonderful example. Mm -hmm. I'm interested now in what kind of research we would like 
people, young scholars in translation studies to do. Do you think there should be more work of that kind, or are we still interested in the psychological, cognitive aspects? Where, where do you see a need for research at the moment? Um, I think that hypothesis building is very important. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter what people come into the area with. It has to do with how they feel about the current research. To read something mm -hmm. and have something go off in your mind saying, that can't be true, I know something else. They bring yeah, in their yeah. personal experience. Like, like you with Newbuck, for exactly. example. You, you get somebody saying something is authoritative, but you think, wait a minute, how do you know that? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Know, yeah. I think it's very important for people to understand the scientific method, regardless of what form it takes, mm -hmm. whether it's knowing statistics, because what they're interested in requires that to be more valid, or whether it means you've seen a counterexample, um, therefore you need another experiment to see if you're going to replicate mm -hmm. something, something yeah, that yeah, someone yeah. has done. Um, I truly believe that people should not see themselves in a box of having to do exactly what the professor does. Um, but I also believe the contrary, that focusing on yourself, because I see that a lot back home, on, on your own experience. For example, you come from Romania, therefore you want to do a study on Romanian. May or may not be valid. Let's see what, you know, it, how it relates to research in general. And I, and I firmly believe that for further research to be good, it's good to have had either prior reading on your own or courses that give you the methodology. Because going forward just with a passion without a methodology... Do you mean basic research methodology or yes, I translation... Do. I mean, should there be translation research methodology or is there anything like that? There is. And it doesn't mm. have to be a methodology course. Yeah. But I think once you're on the graduate level... Either you you should be taking a methodology course, or within a course that uh, leads to some kind of empirical research or or social science type research, mm. uh, the faculty member who wants to work with a team or is willing to supervise students should be insisting on on students doing some of the basic okay. methodology. That, that's an implicit criticism of some of the research being done. Ouch. Ah, well, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you very much.